Rise and shine, campers, and welcome back to another Camp Legend Lorcana video with Ian and Gibbles and Bits. We've got a couple new mechanics to talk about for the new uh, Ursula's Return set that is coming out later this month, now that we are officially in the month of May. And we wanted to do a special video just to talk about these new mechanics. They are very exciting. We've got some cards that have been revealed as well. They give us some examples of how these mechanics will be incorporated in some of the cards for each of the different colors. So uh, Ian's going to take us through uh, some of the different cards that we've seen. And we're going to talk about basically do a mini card reveal review of the cards that are associated with these new mechanics. Yeah, so starting off, we have a pretty interesting spin on an existing mechanic, uh, which is the introduction of six new Floodborne cards with alternate shift costs. So we're used to seeing shift costs that are associated with an ink expenditure, but now you can actually shift these cards in uh, with with just a, no, with no ink spent. Uh, and with just a uh, alternate cost. So in this case, um, we have an Ursula, Eric's Bride. Um, and this card, I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit here. Uh, so this card enables you to discard a song card to get it shifted in right away. Which seems pretty good considering uh, the effect of the card. Um, which enables you to do some pretty strong discardy shenanigans so that you can immediately offset that cost uh, of discarding. Now, um, we, we're going to talk about this one in a little more detail. Gibby, I'd love to get your thoughts. But just to be clear, we're going to take a quick you know, tour, right? It seems like most of these cards are all discarding, but they're discarding different things. So you can see discarding a character card. Mm -hmm discarding an item and so that's sort of the basis for this the idea that you're sacrificing cards in your hand in exchange for uh bringing out uh a more powerful uh card for free now obviously you can still purchase these cards for their ink cost so you can still just pay four for ursula um but if you want to shift it onto uh, one of your smaller Ursulas, um, or keep in mind, and I think this is something that we should remember as we continue this discussion, if you want to shift these onto a morph, uh, then uh, you know obviously you're giving up a little bit of hand advantage in exchange for a powerful, tall unit with usually a pretty good effect. So let's talk about Ursula. Gibby, what are your thoughts on this card? Yeah, um, as we'll, you'll see a theme as we go through each of these different alternate shift cards is that the, the cost is really thematic to what the colors already do well. Like it's kind of the bread and butter of some of the existing cards that are in specific colors. We know that steel song was very, very good. And, and Amber has some great songs and they are very good at being able to play songs efficiently. Uh, I think this is good. Uh, I, I like, the cost almost becomes null and void on the card, right? Because if if you're going to use the alternate shift cost, so mm -hmm. thinking about I'm going to play a song to get a shifted body and a quest for two, which isn't proved upon the the smaller shift drops for Ursula the, at the two and three that we that we can that we currently have and know about uh, that are both in emerald. So you're starting to think uh, Am amber and emerald. Um, but when this character shifts, chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a non-character card of your choice. I like the non-character card. It still kind of keeps the same theme of uh, Bare Necessities being discarding a non-character, also an Amber card. I like it. I don't think it improves a, on the body a whole lot, uh, outside of maybe if you're looking at just the two cost Ursula, which once it has its effect down, you're not really concerned about getting rid of that two cost Ursula to upgrade mm -hmm. to something else that's got more of a continuous effect. I, I think it could see play in disc in discard decks, um, especially if you play Ursula on two, Prince John on three, and then shift this Ursula on four to immediate, immediately get the. You can shift uh, this on the, three. So you can yeah, play I Prince mean, you John, can... shift this as long as you have a song to discard. If you, yeah. if you go Ursula 2, and then on turn 3, you go Prince John, shift Ursula, and then quest. Discard um, a song, and then gain a card for But the, then gain a card for, yeah, for... Assuming they have a non-character card. Which, I mean, non-character versus song is a is big. It, highly different. 
Well, and if you if you're if you've already played Ursula Deceiver, true. To look at their hand, you'd have you know a good idea. There. You'd have a good idea if that effect is going to go off by playing mm-hmm. and shifting in this Ursula Eric's Bride. So, uh, the theoretical line in which this card fits into into a specific deck, I think, makes sense, and I, I like it. I think this card will um, in focused discard decks might see some play if we see an emergence of amber emerald i also think that this is nice in a way because and and we'll see this with a couple of the other cards it does seem like these cards are being made and many of the cards in the set and we'll have to talk about that uh in a different video are intended to go with two colors and pushing two colors together in a more seamless uh, way and this card definitely feels like a bridge card between emerald and amber that is probably intentional by the designers to say here's something that it can work you know in any amber deck but it's extra nice with emerald because that's where all the ursulas are um so that's pretty nice there's also some in uh amethyst too which is interesting but um yeah i think this card obviously it being uninkable is tough but i think the ability to improve on a one three with a two four that quests for two uh for theoretically hand advantage but not for ink that's pretty cool um let's take a look at the next one flotsam and jetsam Uh, this is also going to have a promo card variant uh, i believe um Mm -hmm. this is of course a six cost inkable which is nice five five entangling eels they're together on a card which is kind of cool to shift you have to discard two cards um but uh it's effect here it's kind of odd that they put this in parentheses but anyways um you can shift it onto either Flotsam or Jetsam, and this card counts as being both. And so what that means is all your Flotsam cards, which buff Jetsams, and all your Jetsam cards, which buff Flotsam, they all buff this. Is this just a meme? I don't think it's a meme, but I also don't... Like, I don't think it's a meme, but I also don't think that it is a good card because it doesn't really improve that much upon the original base cards. I mean, this is essentially going to be once you've shifted in a blank card uh, and I like, it's almost a vanilla five, five and mm. some of the, the, the base Jetsam and Flotsam cards are already quest for two. So you're literally just, uh, it's just a buff in stats. And well, you can are... also give out keywords. So there's the old ones, which give ward and rush and stuff like that. Right. So, well, but it, and if you've got, if you've already got those base versions, you, you have to have multiple of them out. Like you'd have to have a multiple, like a flotsam and a jetsam or multiple flotsams yeah. and things like that to receive it. Because once you shift on top of, if you only have one out and you shift on top of it, okay, well now the keyword granting ability is gone because this is on top of it. And this is just kind of that vanilla card. So you'd have to, you'd really have to lean into the flotsam and jetsam synergy and maybe it's a thing, but the, also the discard two cards is a pretty, becomes a little bit more of a heftier price. I know Amethyst is really good at drawing cards and having a good hand size, but Mm -hmm. that's a pretty hefty price to pay. I do think this card might actually just be best if you play it for six. So if you think about it in the way that like, if you have uh, the five drop, flotsam or jetsam out which gives rush to everything or to rush to all your other units um and maybe if the ward one's still out and you're able to bring in a you know six cost rush warded evasive you know um unit that might not be bad just by itself and remembering of course that if this thing is already out and it lives a turn and then you want to play new flotsams or jetsams from your hand that could be kind of neat i do think that i think it's bad in the context of competitive Lorcana, I think it could be good in limited formats that we have yet to imagine, but like things where imagine if they do a format and my local group's been excited about trying a night where we just play like, um, you know, movie theme decks where you can play, you know, only cards from yeah. a certain movie. This could be really cool to play this with Ursula's and, and just a whole deck around little mermaid. Um, I also think one thing I've been thinking about doing is with all my bulk, is building new player decks that are themed. So like building a Titans deck, building a, you know, Flotsam and Jetsam deck, building a, you know, things like that. This could be a perfect thing to like, hey, I can put together a 60 count deck with mostly like commons and spare rares uh, that I could just give to a new player so they feel like they already have a cool deck as opposed to the starter decks, which are all over the dang place. So that could be neat. Yeah. 
a little bit more of a focused deck how we how we as players would build a starter deck right it's a theme deck but yeah yeah how we as players would build a starter deck is exactly what it is okay let's look at one of the legendary cards that's been revealed here uh diablo devoted herald three cost on inkable two two this shift uh cost asks you to discard an action card it has evasive which is good because its ability uh means that uh, during your opponent's turn when Ever they draw a card while this character is exerted, you may draw a card. Uh, I've heard a lot of buzz about this. What are your thoughts, Gibby? It is a great card. <laughs> I th I think I th I mean kind of put plainly, it's it's a great card. Um, it activates a Bucky immediately if you're going to go the Floodborne route, and you mm -hmm. can shift it on two. Like, you can play the Purple Diablo on one, you can play Bucky on two, shift Diablo on top of the other Diablo that's now, that you've got Evasive on now. Mm -hmm. um, they have, they'd have to discard a card because you played a Floodborne character, like, and now you've got, you can exert it exa at that point to like quest for one. And every time they draw a card, even at the beginning of their turn, like you're going to get value out of that. The two, two yeah. body obviously isn't the most ideal because you're going to be able to kill it. Like with a lot of other sure. action cards, like a baboom or a fire, the cannons or with the storm rage, any other actions and songs that we do uh, end up getting from the the new upcoming set uh, and countless abilities deal two damage so it, it is killable yeah but it's also it's a soaker up of target of of removal so like and you're not too mad about that my thought on this is that this is going to feel like uh beast did last set so last set when Beast did not have as easy removal, there was no Madame Medusas, there were no Along Came Zeus. It felt like if this thing, you know, landed on the board, they you had you were instantly put on a two turn clock because then all of a sudden your opponent's gonna have double the resources. This feels like that, but in the early game, where if they are able to kill it, you have invested not just one card for Diablo. You've also discarded the original Diablo, or sorry, not discarded, but you've invested the original Diablo if you shifted it, and the action you discarded. So you've invested three cards, you've gotten one card in exchange, and if they kill it, you're still in the negative, right, on hand advantage. However, if this lives more than one turn, you are getting immense value for the rest of the game. Uh, I think that this might just be a card where it's actually just good playing on three. It doesn't have to be shifted. Um, so, you know, um, I think it's really good. I think that it might be a little bit of a trap where, like, players are going to try to, like, shift this every single game no matter what. And then they're going to get baboomed. And then they're going to realize, oh, I can't ink anything next turn. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah. Anyways, interesting card, though. Interesting card. All right, let's take a look at Li Shang, uh, the Valorous General. It says a three-cost inkable 3-2. Three, wow, a really early game Floodborne uh, to trigger some of those, uh, you know, cards like uh, like Bucky um, or or uh, the the Fairy, uh, the Blue Fairy. Um, Blue this fairy. could be really, really cool. I don't know if this is really a worthwhile card to ever shift. Um, this feels like the kind of card that you just want to play for its raw three-cost value. Um, it does have a neat effect where, uh, you know, the effect doesn't require you to swing or quest or anything. So it kind of feels like, why is this card a shift? Um, but it asks you to discard a character card and then you can put it onto one of your other characters named Li Shang. I'm pretty sure we have no Li Shangs, uh, under the cost of three. Yet. So not yet. That's true. And, and of course there's still, you know, over half the set to be revealed. That being said, um, the effect is really cool. Your characters with four strength or more get plus one questing. Wow. Um, I like this card a lot. I don't know if it's really going to be... This is going to be like a card that is in like decks that are built around this. And that's like a one or two of them, I think. But hey, what is your hey, thoughts on hey, this? Hey, you know what, what card I really like that I've been building a deck with every single season since it's come out that this Tell fits me. perfectly into? Tell Wait me. set. <laughs> Wait set. I know. And that was where my head went to. Uh, and you know that that deck really can benefit from uh, a, you know especially the the steel ruby one that got popular right there at the end of rotation or not the end of rotation yeah. at the end of um, 
uh, Rise of the Floodborns meta. Um, boy, it's it, but it's so slow. Nobody's been messing with it this set because there's so many other card draw options and so much item removal. That being said, if you're able to close games faster with the help of one or even two Li Shang, whoa, that could be crazy. Yeah, and I think uh, the alternate shift cost... Like mm-hmm. being able to essentially get this out or shift into this for an alternate shift cost. And I do think discarding a character card is one of the most flexible and easy to uh, to reliably accommodate in most games because characters are the backbone of of every sure. deck, regardless of yeah, color. Of like course. discarding a character card probably is one of the easiest to be able to do, mm-hmm. um, especially since you can even discard and like, let's say you have an uninkable that you decided to play some aggressive uninkables at the, at your top end that if you, if it gets stuck in your hand then it's probably a little uncomfortable, well, it doesn't care. This, this cost doesn't care what kind of character or what inkable versus uninkable that you discard. So if you pull out one of your two copies of Hydra that you're sure. like, I don't need this for a while. That's sure. what you ditch. Like that's what you ditch to get Lee Shang out. And you, yeah. cause you can, you can shift this and play weight set or play something else on value on the same turn to kind of keep up that tempo. So you know, I don't think that this is going to be a bad card by any means. I think it's just going to be one of those ones where people got to figure it out. I think it's going to be a good, uh, I think, okay, let me say, it. I think it's going to be a okay card as in like, it might be in a deck or two. It's not going to be very widespread. There's a lot of other better things to play on three that are just more general purpose. But in a deck that is playing around hitting certain thresholds on their power, this is a nice little card to go in there. I just think the shift effect feels, unless we discover something new that like changes this, if there was a one drop Li Shang that says, if I get shifted onto something cool happens, right? Um, I think the shift is going to be largely pointless, but we'll see. Olaf, Carrot Enthusiast. First off, great, silly-looking artwork, which I am enjoying Gosh. greatly. Yeah, um, whimsical. Very whimsical. Uh, three cost, inkable, one, four. So stats aren't that great. Shift, discard an item card. It is in blue. Uh, and it quests for two, which ain't bad. Now, whenever he quests, he basically has super support, where he gives out his stats to all of your characters, um on that turn i you know i i don't know about this card i do think that being able to buff people's stats are nice but you're basically asking for another card to be pre-existing on the board um that uh can buff his stats to a point where it's like actually giving out a large amount of attack because right now you shift him in onto a, an Olaf of which we only have one and it's an amethyst. And then you quest and you buff everyone by one. I just, I'm not seeing it, but I don't think this is a bad card to just jam on curve either. Right. If you play this on three, um, it's pretty nice to be able to the following turn shift or not shift, but to, uh, to be able to quest for two and hand out a plus one buff to all of your other things. Like, you know, if you're an amethyst, give it out to your one drops and two drops, maybe hit some, you know, numbers you need to clear. Um, so I don't know. What are your thoughts? I I think that there is a way there's going to be ways to build this deck. And we don't like we said, we still don't know what the rest of the set looks like. There maybe there's going to be some cards that make it easy. We'll have a static give this buff to X character when it's also on board. Like you're going to have to be able to play a card that statically makes Olaf better without having to intentionally try. Um, There are plenty of cheap buff cards in every single deck or every single color, Mm -hmm. whether it's through an already existing support card or it's something, it's an action, like a cheap action, like vicious betrayal or something like that, which Olaf is not a villain, but uh, like if there's other cards that are like that, like stolen scimitar that you can buff Olaf through but the question is just is it going to be worth it like we have like like you're right the the body is pretty good we like we like to see four defense oops we like to be able to see to see the two questing discarding an item card items are pretty valuable truthfully yeah the ones that are worth putting in decks so like it is true. not to be understated like this is kind of an expensive cost mm-hmm. for an item heavy deck but maybe it's worth it um it just 
what wind condition is this working toward is my question. It, yeah. I, I look at this and I'm like, this is sort of a Alice equivalent card. And I think Alice has the you know, same stats for the same cost, obviously no shift and one less questing, but it's a, it's both a facilitator of clears in a Sapphire deck that is yet to be imagined. Same thing as Olaf. And uh, it is, uh, has actually a win con built into itself, um, which this does not have. So I'm not very big on this Olaf. I do think it's cute. And I actually think it could be really strong in draft. But anyways, um, let's take a look at Aladdin Brave Rescuer. Um, so this is shift discard a location card um, has the effect crashing through whenever this character quests, you may banish chosen item. I want to throw one thing out there before I toss it over to you again. This is one more card where I think you may just play this on curve. It's kind of like competing for the Benja slot, right? Slightly better stats though. However, the unique thing is um, it is a Aladdin that becomes a new shift target for big Aladdin. And mm -hmm. implies there may be a smaller Aladdin that gets printed, maybe a one or a two drop, because if this is going to be able to shift onto an existing Aladdin, what is it shifting onto in a timely fashion? I think this is a cool card, not so much because of this effect, but because of what implies. But evaluating the card itself, Gibby, what are your thoughts? I, I think it's good. <laughs> I think it's a deterrent. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle here. I also think it's interesting that, and I like that they, they're trying to find something for steel to uniquely discard here as this shift cost, mm -hmm. which is funny because I think steel isn't like the faction that has the highest value worth of like locations like i yeah, don't think they have the great, best locations they've got great payoffs but their locations themselves kind of suck right like the bayou is eh, it's a one it's a one drop it's a combo like, card it's not a card you yeah. play in a location deck you play it in a deck that wants it for the combo potential now and you're also probably not sad if it goes right. away, like if you right. if you get discarded, so maybe you play it in well, a combo deck and then you have it. So like a girl, like okay, you're like fine. It's uh, just like Maui's place of exile doesn't see yeah. any play. Like, Share the Nottingham is fine, but it's just generic and. And we did get we did just get Thebes, which is a pretty good uh, location coming up from this new set. So I mean, so maybe we'll see a couple more impressive locations where this does where we're location there are several locations in steel that make sense and granted you still have a second color that you can splash in your deck sure. to play some valuable locations and build that kind of location mm -hmm. like density in your deck um i i agree with you i think one of the best parts about this is that it's a low drop with a decent buy to be able to shift the big aladdin onto yeah. um i would i would be fine to play this card on curve yep. as a three cost three three and have the ability to to banish an item or two in the meantime um, to quest with it and then shift Aladdin on top of it. And now I've got a bigger body knowing, yeah. as, assuming that he's not in, he's not like in danger of dying immediately and you didn't just waste an extra shift. But yeah, the difference between we've determined this, I mean, this is established the difference between two and three health is monumental. So anyways, yeah, I yeah. totally agree. This is an interesting card um, remains to be seen what it, uh, what all it will imply. So that is all of these. Let's take a look at the other mechanic, uh, which is this cool. Oh, I'm going to need to switch the screen over. Bam. Uh, this cool new uh, sort of spin on sing. So we don't have truly original mechanics, but rather unique takes on existing ones, which I I'm a fan of. I think this is pretty neat. So this is a mechanic called sing together, which allows you to team sing. Uh, up to the number. So it's asking you to hit numbers that are much higher, but uh, allowing you to sing with multiple characters. So, uh, for example, we have Look at This Family, uh, which is a Sing Together 7, where you look at the top five cards of your deck, you may reveal up to two character cards, put them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. It's basically a super duper Be Our Guest, right? Uh, it's, it's turbocharged Be Our Guest. Um, and so you can see that, like, if, for example... Uh, you had a, a four drop and a three drop out together. They could uh, exert and reach this number so that you could sing. Look at this family. Gibby, um, thoughts on this card. I don't know if this is the best example of one of these cards. Um, 
It's certainly cute. Um, it will be interesting in draft. Is this card playable at all? Go ahead and zoom in for me a little bit just to be able to give sure, us a little bit of yeah. a better view on the card here. Fill out the uh, the screen share here just a little bit better. That's pretty good right there. Maybe one, maybe one more notch. You got it, boss. All right, yeah. So looking at this, uh, look at this family, which I love the song. It gets stuck in my it's head a good one, uh, almost yeah. week, almost weekly because we play Disney songs for my seven month old constantly. Uh, look at the top five cards of your of your deck. You may reveal up to two character cards to so put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. I first of all, let me let me say for these these sing together costs. I don't think this is going to be hard to accommodate. I really don't. I really don't mm, think that the sing together costs are. I think it's going to become very apparent very quickly, especially when you have these alternate shift costs and you can play things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be very easy to... Your units will be vulnerable afterwards because you're literally going to have to go bam, 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 bam and exert several things in a row if you care. I think the sing together options are really fascinating and I think they're going to be very playable even at these high costs but it's going to have to be worth it. I don't see this version of the sing together cards. I don't see this one as being worth it. Mm -hmm. I, I think you are really going to be pressed for tempo. If you do this, because they're going to kill a bunch you of your be questing, units. You'll be putting your units at risk. You won't be clearing. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I think if I can just put a spin on this conversation here around, I think that all of these are pretty much only viable in an Amber deck with Amber and another faction. Amber has all the singers, right? Um, and if there are singers and other factions that, that pop up and are occasionally viable, I can't remember if there are any in other colors, but I do know it's mostly Amber. And in this case... I don't think there are. I think I think the aggressive singers are all in Amber. And I think that um, these kinds of cards potentially open up um, Sebastian and things like that, the, the two-drop Singer 4s to be interesting. But ultimately, like I just don't see any other faction able to reliably hit these big numbers to the point where they would want to include value engine cards. And instead, um, you know, maybe they play them if the card is just that standalone good enough to play. Yeah. Um, but, but this... This one, it does give you two cards for one. And so if you're singing this with one drop Cinderella and two drops Sebastian, that might be worth it. But but barring that, I again, I just don't know. Um, let's move on to second star to the right. This one I think is the maybe has the potential to be the best of all of them, specifically because it is a 10 cost sing together in Amethyst. Um and uniquely allows you to say chosen player draws five cards. Um, I think that maybe not right away, but I think there's the potential for this to offer some mill strategy um, because you could potentially target your opponent and force them to draw five cards uh, in the same way that you can use Whole New World right now. Uh, maybe there's a steal option. Obviously, we know this could be really good with the seven drop Jafar. Uh, which you're shifting in. So I think this maybe has uh, some of the best potential. Gibby, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think this is actually going to be a decent uh, sing card, despite it being uninkable and having such a large cost. Mm -hmm. um, some of the better targets for shifting in, like the Jafar that would capitalize off of this, are evasive and i think you can very easily build an evasive deck or or some on sort of warded or untouchable deck mm -hmm. um to be able to get this off and I, the payoff of drawing five cards now that's that's a payoff that's juicy um, I, especially if you can do I, it early in the game yeah like and I, and I think i would so much rather for three additional sing together cost i would rather draw five cards that i don't get to choose mm -hmm. than look at the top five cards of my deck and put two of them yeah. into my hand Yes. Like that, the extra, the, the additional three cards, like I'm going to bank on the fact that I've built a cohesive deck that regardless of what I draw, odds are drawing five cards and thinning out my deck and giving me more information about what's still in my deck as well mm -hmm. is going to be very valuable. Uh, it essentially guarantees I've got something to ink every single turn. It insulates me from discard decks, uh, which discard decks aren't trying to kill your things on board. So most likely you're going to get this off yeah. and refill your hand. 
Uh, you even might have something additional in your hand to be able to sing or ink or play, depending on what you've still got left. Oh, well, and if you're singing all of, with all of your units, you should still have all of your all of your ink left That's to play on thing. that turn. That's exactly. This is like a whole new world that is um, maybe less broken. Um, <laughs> so uh, I yeah. I like it a lot. I I don't see a whole lot of opportunities where. I, I mill decks have always been like present, like kind of in the background. Like it's an idea that gets floated around for like a quarter of a season. Then it kind of fades away. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the breakthrough that mill decks need no idea to become a legitimate thing. But I mean, I could see the application, but I think the primary application is going to be questing hard with Jafar or just simply drawing yourself into a better condition to win the game. Yeah, and I actually think that this potentially opens up a amber amethyst controlling strategy where one maybe did not uh, exist before because of your ability to utilize Ariel to go and grab this, to get friends on the other side, uh, to get any of those, be our guest, any of these other cards, any of these songs that give you reach uh, into your deck to find specific answers. And we do know that uh, both of these colors are getting some more controlling uh, archetypes with Amethyst getting this damage movement system, uh, Amber getting some more execute cards where if there are things at certain power thresholds, uh, you can just kill them outright. So this could be potentially interesting. Uh, again, I think that for me, I'm putting all of these songs, even the ones not in Amber, under the lens of if paired with Amber, where you can reliably get this going quickly, what would that look like? And I think second star to the right has potential there. All right, let's look. I also, at I also oh, really yeah. like the fact that you can, um, like, I think this is going to be a great card to be able to maybe even target shift Ursula, or no, I'm sorry, not shift Ursula, shift Elsa, because sure, yeah. you can you can shift Elsa, exert two two units that are going to have to stay exerted through and their sing. next turn, which Eight. then keeps Elsa safe mm -hmm. as a part of this sing together cost and almost fulfills. A majority of this in itself yeah, you just need a two drop <laughs> yeah or or a some other nice amber singer to even go over the threshold so yeah i think i think this is going to be a just fine card i think that's a great uh call out there gibby yeah uh under the sea love this card uh love the song the card art's pretty um sing together eight in emerald put all opposing characters with two power or less on the bottom of their players decks in any order so it's a, it's technically a board wipe, albeit one that's really hard to combo. This is another card that I think is designed to go with Amber. We've seen a bunch of Amber cards. It's a, it is part of Amber's identity to lower enemy attack power. And so I think that um, this is a, again, setting up an Amber Emerald board clear. Um, and because it doesn't bounce to the top of the or bounce back to their hand, it's putting them all on the bottom. Um, this is uh, juicy, but it's definitely a two card combo, which can be really hard when you have an eight ink card sitting in your hand. Uh, I'm not super thrilled about this. Gibby, is there a reason why I should change my mind? Uh, I think so. I think this can be played easier than an actually on curve. Then maybe so maybe assumed. Mm -hmm. You drop one drop. Um, you drop the one drop Kita. Okay. You and then you drop like two drop Sebastian that can sing for four. Okay. You play. You shift Kita in, and then you exert both of them. And their first three turns, especially if you're going second, are like null and void. And it's also a one sided board clear too. So right. like, th I think this is actually. Right. Like, I think this is actually going to be a pretty decent card. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a, one of the better cards, one of the better sing together cards to try and take tempo back and or take board state back if you are going second. Yeah, I certainly see the potential with something like a Kida. Um, there's also another song we're not going to probably take time to look at, but that, you know, gives minus two to everything of your opponents. So there's options. I guess what I'm wondering is, you know, it only hits characters. If you do play it that early in the game, you're not you're not getting rid of much. I mean, if you're playing a popsicle, you know, if your opponent's playing popsicles, they play down a couple items. This literally does nothing. And it sits there at eight ink clogging up your hand. Um, yeah, so like I'm it's not... it's definitely fit a certain kind of deck fit, right? 
it might just be a meta to call card where like if there's a meta where people are playing a lot of early game you 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 charge it in there um all right let's look at a totally pirate's life um i kind of like this card i understand there's a lot of people that aren't high on it i think that it will find a role i don't think it's going to be an auto include but it's a six ink uh song sing together six um each opponent loses two lore you gain two lore it is aladdin's effect of being able to steal two from your opponent um notably all of these if they are sung by ursula if she participates in the team sing you can play them again for free so if ursula was to you know be one of the people singing together on this um you would be able to steal two and then immediately steal another two um which is pretty interesting feels like it's a game closing card or a card that is played in a very uh slow paced deck as a way to stop your opponent from getting across the finish line while you're waiting to be prepared or flip the board or something yeah uh i i like it i've always been very interested in lore steel decks and mm -hmm. this is right in line with that if it's worth the sing cost is the part that i don't know because aren't you like unless your opponent the only scenario where this is probably worth it to me is if your opponent it's not so much about you gaining the lore it's about your opponent losing the lore right like because otherwise if you're singing with a couple characters odds are they you almost be, certainly yeah you could be questing with them they just can they just quest for the same if not harder then this is gaining you lore so it's more about the losing the lore than it is let me throw one other lore. concept out there gibby something i think that people are not thinking about with this deck or with this card Ruby has the highest concentration of cards that ready themselves, but then don't let them quest afterwards, right? Things like Scar. If you have seven drop Scar come down, clear, clear, ready, you can then have them sing a Pirate's yeah. Life um, and steal two lore on top of that. You have things like the five drop Captain Hook, right? That has its mini Scar effect. You have LeFou's. You have Shield of Virtues. There are a lot of things that ready location themselves. moana yep um and so i'm wondering if that is a under represented component uh, of this card and that people are not evaluating correctly i i don't think this is all of a sudden going to become a game warping effect for sure it, it is not that intense but as we've determined with something like aladdin now granted that comes with the body stealing lore is really strong the only reason in my opinion and i think you share it that aladdin is not seeing more plays because of the horrible quality of its shift options um it's just they're bad <laughs> yeah. um so i i think i i'm optimistic about this card i'm 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 conservatively optimistic about this card yeah i i think this could be a, like a couple a couple copy splash in a deck that this mm -hmm. fits or that needs to slow the game down because it's aiming towards something in the late game but um yeah, yeah definitely not a four of i don't think probably not probably not all right let's take a look at dig a little deeper uh, eight cost, um, Sapphire, uninkable. Don't love that. Um, this is basically just a, a slightly more flexible version of, uh, look at this family. Of course, it's uninkable. It's eight. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Put two into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Now, I want to throw out there that this is basically like Super Gaston, right? Um, it can be sung by Tomatoas, which obviously are seeing a ton of play. So Tomato could just sing this himself. Um, all that said, I think this is a terrible card. Agreed. Uh, I don't really think there's need, needs a whole lot of discussion here uh, outside of the looking at the seven cards. Like you are looking for, if you're playing this, it's because your deck has to find something specifically. Mm -hmm. Like this is like the fact that you're digging for seven in particular yeah. means you are looking for something that you're not running four copies of or something that is uninkable that the timing of it and when you find it matters. Yeah. Um, and it's also really rough because what if you find two copies of it, which isn't unheard of, especially when you're looking at seven copies and then now the other, then maybe additional copy of it is on the bottom is it's on the bottom and like, you're probably not going to be able to get to it. So man, if this was inkable, this card would be juicy, right? Maybe not good, but it would be uh, an option for these super greedy blue decks, but because it's uninkable, imagine, mulligan and then this comes into your hand and you know you'll never be able to play it it's just going to sit there for forever right 
Um, yeah, it, it's not good. I think that I think I'm I feel safe to say it's not good. Um, and if I'm wrong, I'll eat my words. But I, I think this is a trap card uh, that is going to it's also going to be a card like I don't even think you want to play this in drafts. I think this is just bad in general. I blue to me, Sapphire might be one of might be the worst color to have to play sing together cards. Yeah, because you can't like what does Sapphire do? Well, you ramp your own ink well yeah, you're not really playing well a ton and the, of characters the, and and it's not like you can mix and match like okay i've got like you can't mix and match the resources but okay i'm gonna spend four ink and then turn this one four costed character yeah. uh exert them to in total make the eight that i need for this thing together you have to be characters from the board yep which sapphire doesn't want to do or do well or they the, the units that they want to the play time they, they have want, that many like, characters they don't need this effect anymore Right, you're playing other things that are of value that are helping accelerate your win condition or take the board back. Like, yeah, like why? Why would you pay eight? I'm saying, I'm obviously ignoring the singing thing. Why would you pay eight for this when you could play six for Gaston? The amount of scenarios where that exists are low, right? It's literally like, oh, I lose if I don't have a be prepared. Um, but that's not enough to offset the amount of times where. Um, you're going to say, oh boy, I wish this was just a Gaston. I don't need anything specific. I need to win faster, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Just not a good card. So I'd rather, I'd rather play four drop grandma that allows me to look at a couple cards and, and then put one yes. in my hand. Well, and she's inkable too. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, the mob song. This one's interesting. Uh, we have a 10 cost uninkable steel action sing together 10, but it allows you to deal three damage to up to three chosen characters and or locations. Um, I can see a world in which this is added to probably not Steel Song, but added to some sort of Steel-based deck. I think it's just way worse than Grab Your Swords. I think it's I think Grab Your Swords is, which ironic because they come from the same song, right? It, literally, the mob song is the name of the song. Grab Your Swords is the line from it. I think Grab Your Swords is strictly superior in almost every situation. It's easier to play. You can likely actually, sp how many times have you spent five to play Grab Your Swords instead of just singing it? Um, I think this is a trap card, but I'm willing to be convinced otherwise. Um, I think it's interesting that the like you're looking you, you compare it to grab your swords which is a direct comparison to this card and the fact that it can also be sung i i don't think opening this up to locations and adding is is applicable enough and or influential enough to justify the double cost of grab yep. your swords plus the one additional damage to chosen characters i think i would rather just deal two to everything and either either having sung that with one character, which is a lot mm -hmm. more likely, or um, played it for five and then attacked some things and, and, and finished yeah. off whatever the rest of their board was. I mean, if you're picking your spot and playing a, a board wipe, it's probably because you, you've done the math and you can do the rest of the job. Otherwise, it's not a good scenario for you to play it. Like, I, this, yeah, this just doesn't this doesn't find itself to me to be a full board wipe all the time, which is crazy for me for a 10 cost sing together with everything like, and a couple things you can't do with this that you can with uh, grab your swords. This cannot hit warded units. Um, so you can't kill. Prince it's a Johns. very good point. You can't put damage on, you know, uh, Kuzgo's right. So that's not great. Um, Prince John being a very relevant card in the meta and probably will be for a while. That's, you know, grab your sword is one of the only reliable ways to kill Cogsworth. Him. Cogsworth. You can't damage the, well, you know, um, there's a lot that is, and more probably to come. So don't like that. Additionally, if you could stack these on multiple characters, that would be really interesting. But um, this does not permit you to choose the same character three times. You have to choose up to three different characters or locations, which means it would be great if you could say, I'm going to play Mob Song and choose Robin Hood, Champion of Sherwood twice, and then choose Ariel once and kill both of them, right? That'd be nice, mm -hmm. but you can't. So um, this card, I think, is just, I think it's pretty bad. 
Um, and and I'm and again, I said at the beginning there may be a world in which a deck wants to run this and grab your swords, right? A uh, super late game, super greedy, has lots of ways to sing, right? Um, but I think that most of the time, especially because it's uninkable, this is going to be left in the uh, bulk bin. So, yeah, I agree. Cool. All right. Well, that is our rundown of uh, Sing Together as well as uh, our alternate shift costs. Uh, we will be doing some more content very soon, uh, looking at plenty more of the things to come in Ursula's return. In the meantime, definitely check out our Discord. Jump in there, chat with us about the new cards as they come out. Tell us what you would like to hear down in the comments as well. If there's other cards from the set you want us to review um, or anything in particular you want us to hit on before that set drops, let us know and we will tackle that topic. In the meantime, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you on the next one.